I remember I first got interested in reading and learning about what it means to be human when I was in uh, 11th grade and I took European history. And uh, I would really enjoy going home and reading the chapters and listening to the lectures when I was in class and taking notes and really trying to understand how history works. And uh, that sort of led me to psychology because I wanted to understand how these people how Napoleon became what he was, you know, how Alexander the Great became what he was. And then, you know, I started to hear about the philosophers in history. I remember 11th grade European history class learning about Descartes and what a genius he was and Locke and Newton and, and how they affected the, the culture and the, the political climate. And, and But I, I, I never really got much of the philosophical side. And that came after I was interested in psychology because in 12th grade I took psychology. And I read that textbook and I ate it up. And then uh, I went to college and started doing philosophy. And the philosophy classes were easy. I did the readings, you read pamphlets. But on my own, I was reading all these other books about Eastern mysticism and lots of Alan Watts and Ram Das and reading and taking, you know, psychedelic drugs and having intense experiences that uh, I've really not done recently because they really showed me a lot, scared me a lot, um, told me what I should be valuing in life, but uh, it's not that, that that revelation is easy to just implement in your life, um, though I, I would say I have had transformative experiences from those substances, but they're steps on a ladder and there, there's no ultimate leap into enlightenment. Uh, that's difficult because you're not separate from your environment and if you're in an environment where that type of development isn't fostered then it's not going to happen and that's not to blame anything on fate or on others when you should be worried about yourself it's just to say that we are products of our environment and ultimately there's no separation between the state of my uh, surroundings and the state of my mind if my room is messy and my house looks like shit well it's because I'm disorganized up here I'm not uh, setting goals, I'm not motivated, and I think uh, this evolution that I've gone through in just thinking about the world, I mean, you know, it started with history, and then actually there was a political phase, but uh, actually it was history, psychology, then politics, I read a lot of Noam Chomsky, I got really interested in, in the whole electoral process, and uh, was very interested in the whole thing. Uh, really devastated when Bush won in 2000, which was, that was my first involvement in this whole thing, and I, I was really uh, taken in by it all. But then I started reading about psychology more, and I realized, wow, politics is, is this folk understanding of the human being, this rational actor model. I mean, politics assumes that the modern self is an empirical reality, when if you start looking at modern or postmodern philosophy or just modern science, the idea that there's some kind of self up here that can decide what the person does by making rational choices and weighing all the options logically. I mean, we know now empirically, scientifically, by studying the processes of the brain that we reason and think about the world metaphorically all the time. And logic itself is based on certain experientially grounded metaphors, you know, literal bodily uh, processes. And so, you know, after psychology, I, I got into philosophy because you, to, to really talk about psychology, you have to have the philosophical understanding of how language has carried meaning throughout human history. And that's what philosophy is worried about. I mean, there's history on the political level, you know, where the Napoleons and the Hitlers and the Alexander the Greats, uh, make people move, but then there are the thinkers that inspire those great movers and shakers. You know, there's Aristotle who's tutoring Alexander the Great when he's a child and a teenager, giving him the understanding to be a very powerful force in the world. And I think, so for me, I, I'm, I'm kind of jumping out of philosophy now and into science, but it's a science you know, that's open to spiritual understanding because modern system science 